Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. You're watching COVID-19 India Fights Back. I'm Tina Jha. The second phase of COVID-19 vaccination is underway in the country. Those above the age of 60 and people above 45 years of age with comorbidities are being inoculated in this phase, which was launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who took the first shot early on Monday. Citizens can make their registration through the COVID portal or book their appointment through the Arogya Setu app. Those eligible to get the vaccine shots in this phase can choose the center of their choice and book an appointment based on the available slots. Also, the beneficiaries have the option for walk-in registration at their nearby vaccination center. According to the health ministry, there have been around 50 lakh registrations on COVID for the COVID vaccination since Monday until now. On this edition of the program, we'll discuss with experts all about the second phase of the vaccination drive, the general queries that people have about the vaccination process, and the challenges, if any, towards effective and smooth implementation of what is the world's largest inoculation program. For this, I'm joined by two distinguished panelists. Let me introduce them to you. We have with us uh, Professor Narendra Kumar Arora, Chairman, COVID-19 Working Group, National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization, and Dr. Dhruv Chaudhary, State Nodal Officer for COVID-19, Haryana. He's also Senior Professor and Head, Pulmonary Department, Pandit B.D. Sharma, PGIMS, Rohtak. Welcome, gentlemen, on this edition of India Fights Back on Rajya Sabha TV. Dr. Chaudhary, let me begin today's program with you. So, you know, after more than a month-long wait, the vaccination drive has been extended to the general public. Of course, it is first for the elderly and those in the high-risk category first. If we talk about the first two days of the public rollout of the vaccine, how has the response been in Haryana? You see, uh, Tina, uh, thank you very much. I think it is a very important phase in our fight against COVID. And as far as Haryana is concerned, I think response is overwhelming. Yesterday, I was getting called from my known two dear ones. Can I talk to somebody? Because people have been resisting overwhelming in Panchkula. Same thing at Rohtak, we are seeing that large number of senior people who have been there, they are queuing, they are coming, and they're getting themselves registered. So I think probably with a lot of IEC programs which have been going on, elderly have been looking forward to, and quite often I am seeing even calls from Gurgaon itself and from Faridabad. So I, I, I think gradually people are picking it up. That fear has gone, and probably with the Honorable Prime Minister himself taking up, I think uh, Professor Kesanath Reddy had said a couple of days ago that if probably Prime Minister and other people take it, that some amount of hesitancy may go. I think probably uh, Honorable Prime Minister has uh, taken the vaccine and uh, whatever the hesitancy which was there, I feel should melt away and we will be seeing more and more number of people coming up. And secondly, I think that complacency which has set in that probably COVID has gone away. I think with the recurrence of cases again coming up, it has brought into uh, the urgency with which it is there. I think it has been a very welcome step the government of India has taken. My own feeling is, I think Dr. Roda can further explore, uh, can explain on it, is that the government in the first one month or so actually looked at it the way things have been there because on an average in my state, 45%, 45% plus minus people have got vaccinated as a uh, as far as uh, COVID is concerned, because a lot of people are hesitancy. But when we looked at because large number of our population or the healthcare workers are females actually, and we found that nearly 12% are either pregnant or lactating. So if I really look at it, the number goes back with 60% or so. So probably you will see that parameter you will be seeing at multiple places. But nevertheless, gradually that vaccine hesitancy which was there has been reducing and uh, I can assure, I am reasonably certain that probably uh, we will be, if not all, we will be reaching around about 60 to 7 per percent of our target uh, targeted population. Certainly, and vaccine hesitancy is something that needs to be addressed uh, at the foremost. Professor Aroda, towards this, the Prime Minister led by example when, you know, he himself uh, got vaccinated immediately after the drive was extended beyond the healthcare and the frontline workers on Monday. And since yesterday, we've seen a number of leaders, eminent personalities coming forward, taking the first shot of the vaccine. 
How significant, according to you, is this step towards addressing vaccine hesitancy in the country? Thank you, Tina, for inviting me. And uh, as uh, Professor Chaudhary has said, uh, two things which have happened, and I think we should really appreciate that. One is that the country strictly in letter and spirit followed the prioritization list. So the health professionals, health providers, our security personnel and uh, municipal karamcharis, they were the front line and they were the first in the queue. And it is heartening to see that in contrast to many other countries uh, where uh, the, the VVIPs break the queue or jump the queue. But our uh, Honorable Prime Minister set an example that we had our own vaccine, there was plenty of opportunities, but no. And this itself is a great message that things are being done transparently and in a very uh, orderly manner. The second is that when uh, we have all our leaders getting vaccination, no doubt it instills further confidence. But here I would like to add that during last six weeks, 1.5 crore people have been immunized. Now, this itself is a big scientific proof that the vaccine is safe. So whatever little hesitation is uh, uh, was, uh, was observed, and I must say, being a profession, medical professional myself, this hesitation was more in medical, uh, our medical colleagues. But over the time, people have realized that, no, uh, we have to go because uh, as uh, leaders in the community, we are ultimately the providers also, that itself. And we now find that uh, over two thirds of the health professionals have got their vaccines. So I think there is a multitude of uh, uh, events which is taking place. And finally, I would like to end only there is a, a global uh, vaccine confidence meter. That means issue of hesitancy. And it's a matter of great pride. Only yesterday uh, I was uh, in this uh, uh, Wilton Park uh, uh, dialogue, which is also uh, is kind of, they, we, we had people from all over the world. India is the least, uh, 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 India is the place where least hesitancy is there. So while it's a very legitimate that it was a new vaccine, something too good came too early. So there were uh, issues of uh, safety. But our country has shown that despite that, I think we deeply believe in prevention is better than care. And uh, therefore, globally also, we are, we, are the among, we are the best in terms of vaccine confidence. Okay. Uh, Professor Chaudhary, when we talk about vaccine hesitancy, Professor Arora said in the initial days when phase one of the drive began, the healthcare workers particularly were reluctant. There was hesitancy among them, especially towards getting administered the co-vaccine, which is our indigenous vaccine. Now that the prime minister has himself got administered with our indigenous vaccine, the co-vaccine, how significant is this message not just for the general public in India, but for countries worldwide. It is sort of rebuilding the trust in the Made in India vaccine. Uh, Tina, uh, let me tell you a very interesting thing. I myself have been, uh, have been an investigator for phase one, phase two, and phase three of co-vaccine. In fact, my, my, my institution has the one where we started up and we have very given a large number of patients in phase one, phase two. My wife herself is a trial partner of co-vaccine. My whole department, the youngsters, once it was allowed, they have been participated in that trial. So I had no doubt in my mind at all. But I do agree with you that there was a large amount of uh, of uh, misconception. And uh, they were there because we had gone through the every phase. We looked at the sophistication of research. Uh, trust me, people should be very happy and proud. The level of sophistication of research, which is there. I think that is one part. And secondly, more important was... <clears throat> The way it was conveyed, actually, the, the message was lost. The messengers, the way conveyed it, that's what created the problem. So, so the, now I think with the prime minister himself taking up, all the top <clears throat> eliminaries in the government, in the medical establishment, taking the co-vaccine, that particular component needs to go away, that, that this is not an effective vaccine. I think nobody challenged the science. What people were asking, the evidence. And once it got published in Lancet, other things have been coming up. 
Now, phase three, we all knew, will come up in the month of March, the data. Therefore, questions were legitimate. The only thing that is happening for the first time is that everything is running parallel. What I mean is, <clears throat> Dr. Roda himself is a pediatrician. It used to come first, the first phase, analyze, take your time, go to phase two, take your time, you go to phase three. Now, here you're running with the time. Now, it is a conceptual change, so people have to adjust to that. That is why all questions are being asked. Now, these questions are legitimate, but at the same time, I always say, and the second question people ask is, which is better? And I think what Dr. Guleria said is, whatever you get, you take it. All are efficacious. Only important issue is how we can break the chain and yeah. reduce the chance of transmission. And finally, I think Dr. Roda will agree with me. As a pediatrician or as a young mother's people go, when their children get vaccination, the infants, they always give them paracetamol. And they know that they are giving DPT or pentavalent, they will get fever. The massive adult immunization program is unique in its own. Therefore, there was a hesitancy. And we observed that as far as the co-vaccine is concerned with the COVID shield, which is that both are effective vaccines. But what we found relatively incidence of adverse events have been lesser with co-vaccine. I think that should also be reassuring to the people that probably it is not only a safe vaccine, it is also efficacious. I am privy to a bit of a data, probably will be coming up, and you will find it to be effective, and it is based on a time-tested models. Okay, all right. Let's now talk about the implementation of the second phase of the vaccination drive, Professor Arora. So based on the feedback from the first phase, what are the changes that have been incorporated in this particular phase to make it an even more smooth affair? So I think four or five key messages were there. One is that how do people get registered? The second was once registered, what kind of appointment system and flexibility should be given to the beneficiaries? Third is very important that how to monitor in an ongoing manner uh, adverse events. So it is so beautiful. It's a dream come true that the at the end of the day, I know it is 1.5 crore vaccines given and how many of them had adverse events. It is phenomenal. It's, I, I think it is one of the unique examples. So that was from the beneficiary type and also what happens when there is crash down of system, the uh, IT platform and the glitches have been found. And uh, uh, so how to uh, manualize the whole process and then upload the data by the end of the day so that all those learnings came. So that was on the vaccine uh, administration. But equally important message and learning has been the supply chain maintenance. The COVID has been built on the backbone of a basically vaccine inventory management program. As a result, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the supply chain and stock out is practically not there. There are 29,000 cold chain points and every cold chain point is monitored centrally at the state level and at the district level on a real time basis. Mm -hmm. At a particular, if there is a breakdown in a particular cold chain, immediately within few minutes, the action would be taken. So the potency of vaccine maintenance, so vaccine supply, vaccine uh, potency, and then finally to see that the vaccine reaches in the remotest place at the right time. And how the, this thing is happening, this is being monitored. So I'm sure uh, all of us have uh, visited this dashboard, COVID dashboard, which gives hourly picture of how many vaccines have been given. And at the back end, you can see immunization center wise. So if there is an immunization at Malviya Nagar uh, hospital, I exactly know how many people have received the vaccine, what were the first vaccine, what was the second vaccine. That is again the kind of monitoring and it also brings, brings in accountability and total transparency. So several things, many of these things will become more uh, uh, clear to most of the uh, most of us. But the, the underpinning of all this, I must tell you, it is going to be transformative for our health system. We shall be able to use 
this platform, IT platform for practically every health services in the country. So a lot of things have happened on the face of it. There may be some glitches at the moment. I think over next 48 hours or three days, things should be all right. But uh, one feels very nice. In fact, a lot of countries uh, in low and middle income settings or even high income want to see how our COVID platform is working because it is unique, I must say, and an innovative approach. Yes, definitely. And as you said, some technical glitches were indeed reported on day one of the public rollout of the vaccine. But the health minister did assure that these are being streamlined to ensure smooth functioning in the days to come. Uh, Professor Chaudhary, coming back to you, another problem that was uh, reported from some parts of the country in the first phase was that of vaccine wastage. Now that we have expanded it further and more and more people will be vaccinated in the months to come, how can we address this issue of vaccine wastage? One of the major reasons for the vaccine wastage has been because they are being distributed in the voils. Now your COVID shield has in a 10 doses and Covaxin has got 20 doses. Now because of that, the numbers initially there was a hesitancy in terms of medical professionals or the healthcare workers to come and get it. That is why it was reported. Expected is to be less than 10%. That means if a voil of 10 I am taking, it should be only one dose, not more than that. And I hope uh, that as the time goes up, the numbers we are we are learning also now, and we are careful now. When we have equal number of number, let's say we have to give two, 20 people are there, so we will open if it's a COVID shield two, if it is a Covaxin one. So we are also learning that way. So probably it was a part of a customization, and and and, and I'm certain Dr. Roda will certify for it that over the last four to six weeks, as we have customized, as we have learned, as we have evolved, it has started going down. Therefore. You see, we expect everything to be perfect on day one itself. Same thing, we had a problem when we started doing uh, uh, app-based registration for the uh, RT-PCR. It took around about four to six weeks, but today you look at it, that platform is beautifully working. Same way we had a problem with the COVID, we are still having it. Glitches are bound to be there, patchwork is going on, and I think it's a constant dynamic process. But look at the load which is coming up. And then we have also have sometimes the speed of the internet, which is there, which may have nothing to do with the platform. So, so, so there are these are IT infrastructure, but we are very self-critical people should be. But at the same time, we need to realize the way we have taken the uh, step forward. Uh, these are we are uh, all of us are responsive to it. Government is responsive. We are responsive, and probably in coming time, as Dr. Roda has said, uh, that can be there. Another way can be. But that little bit increases the cost of the vaccine is if like we have for the influenza vaccines, et cetera, or for the pneumococcal vaccines, a single pre-filled syringes. That is an additional way of it, but it does add to a bit of a cost. That is why even the developed countries, even for your Moderna and Pfizer, have not gone for that because of the cost consideration. I think these both things have to be taken in account. My own feeling is that it will not be more than 10% in any case with the more and more numbers. Yeah. And with more and more, we are getting uh, practically uh, used to it, how to do it. Okay. Uh, Professor Arora, towards addressing vaccine wastage, uh, are we changing our approach as we, uh, as we are in our second phase under, uh, at the moment? And then we, when we head to the next phases of vaccination drive, uh, how do we address this problem of vaccine wastage? So vaccine wastage initially was, as uh, uh, Dr. Chaudhary has rightly said, People were. So I was expecting 100 people, only 30 turned up or 40 turned off or at sometimes uh, so variable numbers. Mm -hmm. And as a result, at that time, it was made, uh, it was ensured that anybody who comes should not be returned. Mm -hmm. As a result, uh, there was more wastage. Ultimately, uh, after talking to program people, we intend to have a wastage of around 5%. That wastage is acceptable because we save on so many other things, not only price, but cold chain space is a very valuable space. It costs money. Yes. So when we have multiple dose vials, the space in cold chain also reduces by one fourth or one fifth in that case. So, uh, but ac actually uh, it the in the usual routine immunization vaccination program, the wastage acceptable is up to 25%. But here it's a, not only valuable in terms of money, but it is valuable because of the shortage of or less availability of the uh, product. 
So uh, special efforts are being done. And I understand there are some studies going on how to actually implementation wise, how to reduce the wastage even further. One okay. more suggestion Dr. Roda, is there is that sometimes there are certain people who land up at the station of vaccination and they're not enrolled. Probably we also use them and allow them to do it. And then subsequently that flexibility, I think we need to, but we have allowed it earlier. I think that if we allow too much of flexibility, then people don't register. So that's a counterproductive part. But I, I think the motto has been till now. And I think that, 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 that we have been trying to follow is whosoever has come, we will not return them back. So I think that itself can also reduce the number of wastage. Yes. I think and in the in next fact, phase is the working. I like said by Tina that today we have three ways of registering yourself. Portal, Aarogya uh, Setu, and then land up at the uh, immunization center, registered. And if space is available, a slot is available, you will be given the vaccine. So all the three are available at the moment. Yes, the walk-in procedure is something that's been added. Uh, another thing, Professor Arora, that I want to touch upon is how to maintain a balance between supplying vaccines to other countries as well as taking care of our domestic vaccination procedure. Uh, when it comes to supplying vaccines to other countries, of course, we've done a commendable job so far through our Vaccine Metro Initiative. But in the coming months, when more and more people will need to be vaccinated, and of course, uh, also considering the huge population of our country, what will our approach be towards maintaining uninterrupted supply of doses for the domestic program while also balancing our commitments to the COVAX facility, other international demands from other countries? So, I think India first is a very important philosophy. So, and uh, as uh, the program has ensured that by July, we should have 650 to 700 million doses because we need to immunize 30 crores. So double the amount and 10% wastage. And uh, I must also would like to assure that within next six weeks or so, we should be having Sputnik 5 vaccine in the market. Another two and a half months or so, we should have Cadilla Zydus also in the, uh, for public use. So there is a very healthy pipeline available for vaccines. And I must tell you, even now, uh, I'm part of the COVAX facility, and uh, two-thirds of the global vaccine uh, supply to the COVAX is from Serum Institute. So it's a matter of great pride. So we are able to balance the two, but uh, clearly our requirements uh, uh, overtake or are more important, I would say, uh, and then take care of the rest of the world. Okay. And one last uh, question from you, uh, Dr. Chaudhary, on the participation of the private sector. There is no doubt it will accelerate the vaccination process, and that is the need of the hour. But there are also certain apprehensions with the entry of private entities, uh, such as, you know, those with means may jump the queues. There could be leakages, there could be black marketing, etc. These are apprehensions that have been raised by certain sections. So how can we ensure compliance of procedures and protocols uh, despite the entry of the private sector? I think, uh, Tina, again, I will say we are too self-righteous. And we, we, we always try to find faults in a system. And trust me, private sector is always delivered to us. We need to have a trust and a faith. That is the first thing I will say. And, and we have the two same side of the same coin, the public and the private sector in terms of deliverance. You look at the vaccination program in pediatrics where the private sector also has played as vital a role as the public sector has taken. Obviously, some are more at the cities, maybe more at a tier two, two, three cities. But here, I, I, the government is already trying to see because most of the time, the private sector will never be, uh, which we presume will be having a, uh, they, they, they will be working for the profits. Actually, that is how the things, the startup. Government already sir, has kept a cost of 150 rupees per vaccine and plus 100 rupees for giving it. And at the same time, they are ensuring the supply chain is maintained through the through the government sector and the track of everything is kept up. But but end of the day, you see, we have to make the things accountable and I'm very certain of, and uh, I, I know how of the people who have been working Easy to blame somebody, but I have immense faith in my friends in private sector. And looking at the government has been very closely watching it up. And not that they are not having faith. I think they have a trust and a faith. But to ensure no gunning of the, uh, no, no jumping of the uh, queues takes place. But nevertheless, the moment you have horizontally expanded it, 
the probability of people j- jumping also becomes very less. If you have a small, uh, uh, if you're horizontally you are less and large number are there, the probability of jumping is much higher. I think in a smart move by opening up large number of institutions, gradually with the government has practically, I won't say nullify it, but scuttled to a very large extent. All right. So with that, I'll have to call it a wrap on this edition of India Fights Back. As both our panelists rightly suggested, there are initial glitches, but over the course of uh, time, we will be able to streamline the procedures and more and more people should come forth, at least those who are eligible to get uh, the vaccine. Uh, I also, on behalf of Rajya Sabha TV, appeal to all those eligible to get the vaccine in this phase. Come forward, get yourself vaccinated and help strengthen India's fight against the pandemic. Thank you to both my guests for joining us on the program and sharing your thoughts with us on the subject. And before we leave, Rajya Sabha TV appeals to all our viewers to stay safe from the ongoing pandemic. Wear face masks, wash your hands and face regularly. And don't forget to maintain physical distancing each time you step outside. Remember, these are simple precautions on our part to defeat the pandemic, which is not over yet. Thank you for your time.